Joining me again today to discuss the radical beliefs of the, of the Islamic terrorists and religious discrimination here in the United States is national spokesman for the Ahmadiyya Muslim Community USA, Qasem Rashid. Qasem, thanks for joining me. Always great to have you here. Pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me again. Let's start with my final point from last night, the clip we saw at the beginning of the segment. This is a question that's on the minds of many Americans right now, particularly after radical Islamic terrorists attacked in Paris and then attacked here in San Bernardino. The question is, how important is it for us, for the President of the United States, to recognize that the threats from these terrorists stem from their perception of the religion of Islam? Well, the Ahmadiyya Muslim community, as Muslims who believe in the Messiah, Mirza Ghulam, Ahmad of Qadian, have addressed this question for well over 100 years. And in leading by example, we've demonstrated that Islam itself does not inspire, permit, or allow any form of terrorism whatsoever. The founder of our community, the Messiah, Mirza Ghulam, Ahmad, wrote over 100 years ago that there is no place for violent jihad in Islam. And he proved it through detailed lectures, through scholarship, through over 80 books. And so our invitation to all Americans is rather than letting these terrorists define Islam or give any sort of inkling of what Islam actually is, the same way we would never dare let the Planned Parenthood terrorist or the KKK define Christianity, we cannot let these terrorists in California or in Paris define Islam. I understand that point, but I think there's a difference between the fight over the interpretation, and we've talked about this before, we've talked about the difference between your interpretation of Islam and the radical terrorist interpretation. You argue that theirs is incorrect, and I'm not arguing with you on that point, but I do think it's important to focus on the fact that our president needs to understand the fact that these terrorists, regardless of whether their interpretation is correct, they believe their interpretation is correct, and that's where their attacks, where their terror is motivated from. Do you think that we need to recognize that aside from the fight about interpretation? Well, it's, it's not just a question of interpretation. It's a, it's a question of fabricating things that simply don't exist. I can make a claim that the Bible allows rape, uh, but it wouldn't be true. It would be factually false. Just because my bizarre interpretation would claim that we wouldn't accept my interpretation as valid. And we shouldn't accept the same concept for ISIS or any other terrorist organization. What President Obama is doing is the exact same thing that George W. Bush, President Bush, did. And that is that I recognize that this is a battle of ideas. We are not at war with their religion. We are not at war with people. We are battling an extremist ideology that is uh, rooted in uh, political grievances, that is rooted in corrupt Muslim leadership, and that is rooted in economic grievances. And I think if we really want to talk about what the solution is to this, it's not going to be by labeling this as a war against Islam or radical Islam or anything like that. All that's going to do is legitimize extremists to think that they have actually gained legitimacy. What we need to do is demonstrate, by example, that we are morally superior, we are intellectually superior, we are eth ethically superior. And as the Ahmadiyya Muslim community, what we are doing is calling upon Muslim leaders to stand united against all forms of extremism, renounce completely any concept that anything in Islam permits terrorism or violent jihad. Part of the problem, and this with you, I'll agree with you, Liz, 100%. Part of the problem is that you have Muslim leaders in countries like Pakistan that are promoting these draconian death for blasphemy and death for apostasy laws. This promotes terrorism. Let me be very clear. Muslim leaders who promote death for blasphemy or death for apostasy, they are promoting terrorism. These concepts have nothing to do with Islam or Prophet Muhammad. This is the model the Ahmadiyya Muslim community has led with, and we've spread peacefully. This is the model forward.